Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you anoint our ears so we can hear and follow you and flow with you. And this, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome to Bible study tonight. And if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. Now we're gonna spend the next uh, few weeks talking about the, very, the importance of being able to be led by the Holy Spirit, led by the voice of God. And there are many ways that God can lead us, but if there's ever a time we need the leadership of the Holy Spirit, if there's ever a time we need access to the voice of God, it would be today. Uh, we need God's voice to guide us where to go, where not to go. We need God's voice to guide us uh, what to do, what not to do. Uh, we need God's voice to guide us because in our attempt to try to hurry up to get back to something that's the norm, God's trying to take us in a new direction and down another path. We have to have access to the voice of God. And so that's what I want to talk to you about tonight, accessing the voice of God. And when you access the voice of God, I, I'm talking about showing you some, or giving you some tips of how to position yourself or put yourself in a position where you can access the voice of God. Now, listen, I know that we're under grace and God can basically choose to let us know things however he wants to let us know things. And he can choose to lead us and guide us in, in dreams and visions, which we'll speak about that soon. Uh, but I, I want to give you some tips. In other words, uh, maybe make some suggestions to you tonight on some of the things that you can do to position yourself to hear God's voice. And I want you, I want you to hear this at the same time, having heard me say that as people under grace, God can choose to, to do things. I may say you need to do this, but then God may say, well, you know what? It's fine if you do that, but I'll choose to do this particular thing. Um, now, let's begin in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. Isaiah 30, 21. He says, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. Now look at this in the New Living Translation. Here he says that, that this is the way of the Lord. He says your ear will hear this. The uh, New Living Translation says your own ear will hear him. Wow, I thank God for that because the Bible says that we're his sheep and he said my sheep hear my voice. And so we have access and permission to be able to hear God's voice. He says your own ears will hear him. He says, right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. I believe we have access to the voice of God. I believe we have access to the voice of God to direct us which way we need to go. You know, it's important that we understand that God wants to lead us in the way that we should go. He wants to guide our lives. And I believe that the best results in a man's life will be as a result of being led by the, by the Spirit of God. The Bible says we're sons of God. We are led by the Spirit of God. But not, not, not many people are still open to being led by God. They want to be led by their own ambitions. They want to be led by their own desires. And yet God knows the best, best path for us to take. God knows the path that will lead us to green pastures. And he also knows the path that will lead you to a wreck. And so I think that this is the perfect time for Christian people especially to uh, understand what they can do to gain access to the voice of God and to, to have the attitude of where he leads me, then that's where I'm going to follow. And so God is willing to offer directions to as many people as many people who are willing to be led. 
And so my question tonight, are you willing to be led? Because that's, that's where I believe it begins. It begins with a willingness to be led. I want to be led by God. That's where it starts right there. I want to be led by God because you're a free moral agent. You can decide, I don't want his leadership. I'm not seeking his leadership. I don't care about his leadership. And you may end up in a wreck. But God, who knows everything, who knows whether we should go right or left, it's time for us to learn how to access that. So I believe it requires diligence. Um, uh, I believe it requires a business-like approach. Uh, you have to consciously program yourself to hear from God. And like I said again, you know, God can choose to do it regardless whether or not you do that or not. You know, the Bible says that um, he'll give more grace to the humble. So obviously being humble positions you for more grace. And uh, so God's just trying to show us how to position ourselves uh, for the better. Now, just as you need to be tuned to a particular frequency in order to pick up a, a radio signal, you need to be correctly tuned to heaven's frequency in order to hear God's voice of direction. I, I'm, I'm speaking specifically tonight about God's voice of direction. And, and I believe that this may uh, require us or maybe we need to get into a place where uh, we have a very definite determination to be in a position to hear from God. Uh, and so I think this is very, very important. So I, I want to share with you uh, three things that I think will help you to position yourself to get the voice of direction. I, I should have called the message this, a voice of direction. And uh, I believe the first thing we need to do is found in Revelations chapter 4 and 1. This is very, very interesting, and I can testify to this. Revelations chapter 4 and 1, here's the first position I think we need to be in in order to get the voice of direction. Verse 1 says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, now watch this, come up hither, underline that, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Notice he says, you reposition yourself and I'll show you. Come up hither and I'll show you. Get into this position. Come towards me and I will show you. Well, I believe that a climbing up is needed in order to hear from God. A repositioning is needed in order to hear from God. A, 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 a coming to God, a sanctifying yourself to God uh, is needed in order to hear. In other words, I don't know where you may be, but where you may be might be a hindrance to you hearing from God. You might be around a bunch of clutter, around a bunch of stress, uh, around a bunch of drama, around a bunch of division, and God is saying, come up hither and I'll show you some things. Reposition yourself and I'll show you some things. And so, now, I believe this may be also saying, come away from all those things keeping you on the ground. Maybe this is talking about a separation is needed. Now, not a separation from God, but a separation unto God. That separation unto God is needed to hear from God or to receive instructions and directions, either from his word or either from his voice. But either way, there's a repositioning here. There's a coming up to him. There is a uh, separating yourself unto God, not from God, but separating yourself maybe from all of those distractions, separating yourself from all of the clutter, all of the worry, all of the news. I see what God is saying here. He says, you know, get away from all of the, the, the things that could be clogging or interfering, if you will, with the signal or the frequency. So a separation unto God. I remember years ago when uh, I felt like I needed to separate unto God to hear some things concerning, you know, the call of God on my life, what God wanted me to do, what God wanted me to preach. And so Taff and I drove to uh, Kiowa Islands. I'll never forget this. And we went with the sole purpose of, you know, separating ourselves unto God come up hither 
repositioning ourselves to go so we can hear what God wanted us to say. We needed some direction. I know I did. And uh, man, it didn't take long at all. I mean, I got in there, got on my face, determined I wasn't coming back until we heard from God. And uh, man, I, I heard from him that night. I was uh, probably on my fourth hour of praying and I heard from the Lord. And I realized that it didn't take but a separation unto him. And so Galatians 1:15 and 18, look at this, Galatians 1:15 through 18, uh, this, this will be pretty important. It shows how Paul um, spent three years in Arabia receiving insight and revelation to God. Paul separated himself unto God in um, Galatians 1:15 and 18. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, Paul said, to receive his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately, he says, I conferred not with flesh and blood. 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and I returned again into Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So maybe it takes time because in that time in Arabia, Paul began to understand what he was supposed to preach. He was supposed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it was made plain because he, he was willing to come up hither. He was, with, he was willing to separate himself unto God. And so a separation unto God is always going to be to your own advantage. You got to be willing to go up to get it. You got to be willing to separate unto him to get it. You really want directions from the Lord? You really want God to begin to direct your path on what you should do, when you should do it, and how you should do it? Then you've got to be willing to come up hither. You got to be willing to separate yourself unto God so that you can begin to do it. I think one of the most frustrating things you can, you can experience in life is not knowing your purpose, not knowing what you're supposed to do, not knowing the next step you're supposed to make in your life. And I'm telling you, the greatest position for you to be in is in a position where God can begin to lead and to guide you and to um, get you to the place where you need to be. So that's, that's the first place I believe can really help you in, in getting direction from God. The second place, now, you know, when I first looked at this and thought about this, I, I couldn't deny what was in the scriptures where this is concerned. So the second uh, adjustment I think needs to be made in your life, listen to this carefully, joy. Joy, I, I, I believe that you position yourself to get directions from the Lord based on the, the level of joy that is, in op, that is in operation in your life. Watch this scripture, Isaiah chapter 12 and verse three, and I'll, I'll read a few more, but this, this originally got my attention, Isaiah 12, verse 3. He says, therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. With joy, you can draw water out of the wells of salvation. So if you're not joyful, your access to him may be hindered. Notice, with joy, you withdraw out of the wells of salvation. I believe with joy you withdraw the directions that are needed in your life to begin to get you to the place where you need to be. And so uh, if you're not joyful, what, what's going on with your access? Is there a connection between the joyfulness and the gladness that's operating in your, in your life and the directions that you uh, have an opportunity to walk in? So I believe it takes joy to gain access into the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The joy of the Lord, watch this, is my strength. See, with joy, you draw revelation. I believe with joy, you draw instructions from God. With joy, you draw the voice of direction in your life with the joy of the Lord. Now, the first thing, as I said, is, you know, I begin to look at, all right, I, I don't recall, not many times, I'm, uh, where I'm just mumbling and complaining all the time that I heard something from Lord, unless it was stop murmuring and complaining. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is the only way or the only time God can reveal some things to you. 
I'm just saying that you can on purpose begin to focus on that joy level in your life and withdraw some water out of the wells of salvation. Now, look at this in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 and 30. He adds a little bit more to this. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 and, and 30. Um, let's look at this. He says, you shall have a song as in the night when a holy psalmody is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord, look what happens based on how they came. They came with song and joy and gladness. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Whoa, that got my attention. I notice in verse 29 how they approached. And then the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the, the lighting down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire and uh, with scattering and tempests and, and hailstones. Uh, the, the part that got my attention was they showed up with joy and God responded with glorious voice. Gladness and God responded with a glorious voice. When will he cause his glorious voice to be heard? When you come to him with a song and with a gladness of heart. That's pretty convincing to me. So if there is no gladness of heart, uh, I don't know, maybe is there a temptation to become deaf? If there's a, no gladness of heart, are, are, you, are you able to potentially hear some directions that'll help you in your life? You know, I believe that happiness is not found. I believe happiness is created. And I think a lot of people in the world are still trying to find happiness. And I believe happiness is not found. Happiness is created. And if you're not a happy son of God, you will never be a winning son of God. And there's just something about the attitude. You've heard the phrase, your attitude determines your altitude. But we've got to stop looking for happiness and we've got to learn how to create that happiness. And I believe that happiness in your life is going to open you up to be able to have access to the voice of direction and you'll go into being a winning son of God. You know, I, I know a lot of people don't think it really matters to God whether or not you are having gladness and joy and, and maybe they don't think it matters that you serve God with gladness of joy, but it does matter. It does matter. Even in the time of the law, there was even a law that was against you coming before God with no joy or no gladness. And I thought, that's interesting. Well, look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7, 47 through 48. 28, 47 through 48. I, I'm convinced that I want to come before God with joy and I want to come before God with happiness and I want to make sure I have the attitude necessary to receive from him. Look what he says here in verse 47, 48. He says, because thou serveth not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Did you see that? So even back in the time of the law, it was, it was understood it's important for you to serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness. Then in verse 48, he says, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger in thirst, in nakedness, in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So until he have destroyed thee. All because they didn't serve God with the joyfulness and gladness of heart, that they would even put a curse uh, in the Mosaic law, put a curse on you for not serving God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Thank God that we're no longer under the law. Thank God we're no longer under the curse. Thank God we're no longer in a position where if we don't serve God with joyfulness and gladness, that God at least won't curse us. But is there something to serving God with joyfulness and gladness versus serving God with complaining and murmuring? 
And so this is something we, we need to consider. You know, I believe that, uh, you know, it's so important for us to destroy whatever causes sorrow around our lives. You need to identify that whatever causes sorrow around your life, you need to destroy it. Um, because I believe that those things are out to destroy your destiny. You either destroy the sorrow around your life or the sorrow will destroy your destiny. And I know people that are stuck in sorrow and that sorrow is designed for destruction in your life and you need to to destroy the sorrow in your life because that 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 sorrow is trying to destroy your destiny that's it's that important I believe it's that important now one thing that generates sorrow is remembering the irreparable past that'll generate sorrow now Paul said in the scriptures and and a couple of things Paul said forgetting uh, the things that are behind Isaiah said, remember not the former things. And Moses said, tell them to go forward. Now, what are, what, are, what are these three saying? The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Paul said, forget about the things that are behind you. Isaiah said, remember not the former things. And Moses said, tell them to go forward. You see, if you don't free yourself from a failed examination, you'll never be able to pass it. And some of you are still in bondage to those failed examinations of your past. And you need to free yourself from failed examinations, the failed tests. And some people have failed tests and, those, and it's still haunting you. It takes a song to hear a sound from heaven. It takes a good attitude, I believe. It takes that joy and that gladness. I believe it'll open up uh, your ears and, and position you to hear a voice of direction in your life. Blessed are they that, that hear the joyful sound, I believe. So, we've got to sing acceptable songs of praise with gladness of heart. And I believe that when we do that, when we, you know, lift up our joy level and when we praise God and we have a gladness of heart, then the sound from heaven will become our heritage. The sound from heaven will become our directions and we're no longer lost trying to figure out where to go and what to do and, and all that kind of stuff. So I believe when Elijah needed direction, um, he said, but now bring me a minstrel. As 2 Kings chapter 3.15. Wow. He needed directions and he, he asked for a musical instrument. What is that all about? You know, uh, David began to, began to uh, exercise uh, demonic spirits from messing with Saul. He, he, he had an instrument. And so he said, uh, bring me the minstrel, 2 Kings 3.15. So the psalmist always heard, heard God's voice. He said, seven times do I praise thee. Wow. Seven times do I praise thee. There is something about praise and worship. There is something about you know, playing instruments before God and just sitting there and allowing God to minister to you. Some of, some of my most significant times of anointing and revelation came when I sat down at the piano and just was, was just, just playing and just praising God for no apparent reason. I don't even know if I was playing particular songs, but just praying as the Spirit of God just kind of led my fingers to pray and, and I, would, I would hear from heaven. I would hear instructions from God. I believe an addiction to praise will open you up to hear God's voice. I, I really do. I, I, I really do. I believe those people that go around and, and they sing praises to God and, and they, they, they worship God and, and they're doing it because they're in love with God now. They're not doing it just so they can get a voice from God. They're, 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 their relationship is producing the praise and, and, and the relationship with God is producing the, the um, the, the opportunity to hear his voice. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it just so I can hear his voice, but it's just so happening that I love him so much that out of my praise and worship, I have access to his voice. Out of my praise and worship and thanksgiving, I get access from God and hear directions from him. 
I believe that's something that we should practice, something we should take hold of, something we should get a hold of. Elevate the level of joy and gladness in your life. And I believe you'll begin to open up to hear some directions for your life. And then my third and final one, I believe in order to have access to the voice of God, number three, you need to be free from cares, worries, and anxiety so that you can gain access to the voice of direction. Be free from the cares, the worries, and the anxieties to gain access to the voice of correction. See, you must deal with worries. You've got to deal with anxieties as if you were dealing with adultery. <laughs> deal with worry and anxiety as if you were dealing with adultery. Why? They rob you of your access to the voice of God, which is your secret for sweatless victory. And so you got to deal with it. You got to seriously deal. And I, th I think that's the issue that we don't really believe that the worry and the anxiety is, is really blocking the voice of God in our lives. And so we don't take it serious. And for me to say to take it very seriously, as serious as you would deal with adultery, because it is a robber, it will try to rob you of your sweatless victory, which is uh, hearing God's voice and getting his directions. Because when you hear from God and he's directing your life, he's going to direct you into victory. But heaviness, it, it's a spirit. And I believe it's a demonic spirit that tries to stop you. Look at Isaiah 61 and 3. Isaiah 61 and 3. The Bible calls it a, a spirit of heaviness. A spirit of heaviness is one of Satan's strategy for stripping God's people naked. Naked is to put a spirit of heaviness on on their life. And verse three, he talks about to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called what the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And so it's important for us to deal with the cares and the worries and the anxieties. Look at a few scriptures with me, Matthew chapter 6, 25 and 33. You have to understand that it's almost a, not only a distraction, but a waste of time to be sitting there worrying about something that you can't really do anything about. You trust God, you're going to get a lot more out of it. But 25 through 33 says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your, your life. Let's look at this in the uh, New Living Translation. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 33. He says, uh, that is why I tell you not to worry about every, everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Uh, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? 26. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No, your worries are taken minutes from your life. He said, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and, and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. He says, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? 31. So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. And I mean, that's huge right now where we are. And he's telling you, don't worry, resist worrying. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. and You can't allow worry to dominate your thought. But your heavenly father already knows, he already knows all your needs. And look what you're doing. You're wasting minutes of your life worrying about something God already knows about. He says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So while you're focused on all what you don't have, you need to be praising God for what you do have. You need to focus on what you can do and quit worrying about what you can't do. 
And I believe when you do that, you, you find things turn out a lot better. Look at 1 Timothy 4.15. 1 Timothy 4.15. Amen. This is so important. He said, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Now, if you worry is a negative form of worry is meditating on the wrong thing. Uh, if you begin to meditate on the right things and meditate on the things of God, then your profiting will appear to all. You might not see it right away, but you're meditating on God's word, God's promises. Your profiting will appear to all. Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4 and 6. See, if you don't meditate on the right things, then the wrong things will take over your mind and you'll start meditating on those. Look at verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So what he's saying here is you've got to start thanking God for the thing that you need. Look at the uh, NLT. I like where it reads there too. Uh, and he, he, he tells you why you shouldn't have to worry and what you should do. He says, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything and tell God what you need. That's awesome. Don't worry about anything. So if you're presently worrying about everything, take note of what he says. Don't worry about anything. He said, pray about everything and just tell God what you need. So instead of worrying about uh, what you need, he says, just tell God about what you need. And then when you tell him what you need, thank him for it. Thank you. Thank him for it as if it's already done. You know, I, I believe in the middle of all that, God begins to speak to your heart or maybe be speaking to the heart of somebody else to come in and, and, and to, to help out with those particular things you just prayed for or asked for. I'm telling you, this thing is real, man. I went to bed one night and I said, God, I said, I'm asking you for eight hours of sleep tonight. And I believe I receive it and I thank you for it. Do you know I slept eight hours down to the minute? I mean, we spend more time just worrying about everything and not praying about nothing and won't tell God about what we need and not, don't think them about it. And then we wonder, well, I don't know what's going on. Well, what's going on is you ain't doing what he said. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and start thanking him for it as if it's already done. Amen. And then Revelations 1 and 10, this will be my last scripture. Revelations chapter 1 and 10. He says, it was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Notice what happens when he was worshiping in the spirit. And suddenly I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. Notice when you can begin to worship God in the spirit rather than worrying, rather than being stressed out, rather than being anxious. He said, from the place of worship, you go to the place of hearing the voice of direction. From the place of worship, place of worship is that place where you'll have access to a voice of direction. You know, we've learned that our giving is a worship to God. And I, I've had some people to tell me that in the middle of their giving to the Lord, they heard a voice from God. That happened to me one time. Well, not one time, several times. In the middle of me worshiping God with my gifts, I get a revelation from God. I, I hear from God. And I believe that can happen to you today as you begin to worship God and you will begin to hear from him. So it's madness. It's madness to be anxious. So don't do that. Anxiety has never provided solutions for any man. Think about that. Anxiety has never provided solutions for any man. It is a destroyer and not a builder. And what builds you up is the access that you have in the presence of the Lord. So tonight, listen, I want you to just practice those things that I gave you. I want you to implement these things into your heart and into your life. And I want you to be so grateful and thankful as you begin to access the voice of God. You are his sheep. You have a right to hear his voice and to be led by him. And I believe as a result of what you've heard tonight, that's exactly what will take place. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to minister this lesson to those who have heard it tonight. And I thank you, Lord, that they will access your voice. They will have the voice of direction. 
They don't have to be lost in life trying to figure out what their next move is. But Father, they can know exactly what you've called them to, to do and they can be at a place where the anointing is. They can be at a place where the results are. They can be at a place where they can prosper and be in health and have success in every arena. And I thank you for your voice. Lord, we need to hear from you. We, we can't afford to try to lead and guide ourselves. Uh, man's goings are of the Lord. And Father, men don't know where they go unless you lead them. And, and, and for every person that's, that can hear me at the sound of my voice, that they will hear from you. They will hear from you and they will be led by you and all will be well. I give you praise for this right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if you're here tonight and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, remember he said, my sheep hear my voice. Are you one of God's sheep? Well, if you're not, you can be. Just pray this simple prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of all of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord and be my Savior. And I declare by faith that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. See, that's so simple. God is so available to you. He loves you so much. And if you just received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, would you text the keyword, I'm saved? That's one word to 51555. Provide your name and email address, and I'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. God bless you. Welcome to the kingdom of God. And we certainly love you. Just go in comment section and tell people, hey, I just got saved. And we want to celebrate with you as we welcome you into the family of God. Praise God. Well, it's offering time. And we thank God for every opportunity we have to sow into the kingdom of God. Every opportunity we have to worship God with our gifts. And uh, like I said, for some of you, it's an opportunity for you to worship God with your gifts. Not that you're trying to get God to do or say anything, but there, there, there are awesome things that happen when you come to God to worship him, when you come to God to honor him, when, when you come to God and, 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 and you're just reminded of all of the good that he's done in your life and you're, and you're saying thank you and you're grateful and you, you appreciate all that he's done. So do that now. Take your gifts and, and go to God and worship. Go to God in thanksgiving. Go to God in praise and have your ears open to hear. In Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you're texting your gift, you can text World Changers, space, and then the amount to 74483. You can call the number on your screen, 866-477-7683. You can mail to the mailing address, or you can go to Creflo Dollar Ministries or World Changers, and online you can give, you can use your PayPal. Let me tell you, we are certainly grateful for a church and for partners that continue to give and to support this ministry so we can continue to help people, to do the things we, we, we need to do. Even though we are not in this building, we are still functioning in the capacity that's making a mark in the lives of people that can never be erased. It's all because of your giving. And uh, we are thankful. And I pray that you use your gift to worship God. That you use your gift, not to try to get God to bless you, he's already blessed you, but to use your gift to say, Father, I am giving from a cheerful heart and um, I'm thanking God for what he's done for me. Thank you so much for uh, what you do. Thank you, world changers. I love you. We are committed to teaching and preaching God's word. We are committed to your spiritual growth. We're committed to your retooling and your resetting. And God is resetting your life. God is uh, retooling your family, your ministry. All is well in the house of world changers. Praise God. Blessings be on the house of world changers. And we thank God for all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, that's another lesson. We'll continue this the next time we get together as we talk about dreams and, and look at what these dreams are for and, and is God trying to speak to you through, green, through dreams and prophecies, it's gonna be very interesting. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Almighty God, 
be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, amen. Good evening, everyone. God bless you.